YouTube, what is going on? Today is session number two of my journey to become a strong motherfucker. So, today we are hitting a heavy bench press with a whole bunch of shoulder and arm accessory work. So, we're gonna get straight into it, but first, I need to warm these shoulders up because I have had some poor history with bench pressing and I need to make sure that these shoulders are ready to go before we start loading up that bar. All right, so a bit of a backstory. A couple of years back, I uh, took part in a fundraising event for one of my clients that involved a lot of burpees. Long story short, I jumped down to do a burpee and felt something pop in my left shoulder. Ever since then, I've been having some difficulties with flat benching, so I'm only just getting back into it. See, when we're first taught to bench press as a bodybuilder, it's typically a very elbows flared, uh, chest dominant movement. So what we want to try and do, particularly in the powerlifting sphere, is turn it into a full body movement to ensure that we're using absolutely everything we can to push as much weight as we possibly can. The best thing about doing so as well is it's actually going to put our shoulders in a far healthier position to lift more weight. So we're going to go through that today because I'm still learning myself, but I thought I'd take you guys through it. So I had what was called or what was referred to as weightlifter's shoulder. Super long name that I can't remember uh, if you're looking for the actual term. But essentially what that means is now I've got a whole bunch of shoulder mobility work before any upper body or particularly chest and shoulder day. So these next few exercises are gonna go through a few sets, 10 to 15 reps on each, just to make sure my shoulders are feeling nice and warm before I start even thinking about bench pressing. I'm just doing everything I can to try and warm up my shoulder and rotator cuff region to prepare myself to bench press effectively. Obviously the health of the shoulders is seriously important when you're bench pressing. So if we can adequately prepare for that lift, it's gonna make the whole movement a lot easier. So let's actually just pick this one up from uh, Oscar who is behind the lens. If any of you guys were wondering, whether or not he lifts. It's 106 kilos lean as bullshit. Obviously too, when you're warming up, you do want to try and limit the amount of static stretching you're doing. Extended static stretching, particularly when you aren't uh, essentially warm and the blood isn't flowing all that well, is, is opening you up to more chance of injury, as well as reducing the elasticity of the muscle. Now, if you're looking at strength and power work in particular, elasticity is super important, which is why typically people tend to recommend more ballistic, explosive, almost bouncing style stretching before you start training for the most part. Okay, so just finishing off with a little bit of external rotation, shoulder joint, just to make sure the back of the shoulders helping with maintaining posture throughout the lift. Deceptively difficult exercise to perform, so make sure you pick a relatively light weight to do it with. So we've got 12, back of my shoulders on fire. All right, so about 10 to 15 minutes in already, um, obviously just focusing on mobility work so far. I'll be honest, it's more mobility work than I've ever done uh, before any session, but in all honesty, it's made those sessions so much more productive, simply because I can activate and recruit the muscles I'm actually looking to target, as well as lift, essentially pain-free. I'm feeling good, I'm feeling warm. Time to do this, bench press. So when we first start lifting, when we first start bench pressing, we're typically taught to do so in a flat position, flaring our elbows so that we can best target the chest and essentially isolate those muscles when doing the movement. Whilst this may target the chest as efficiently as possible, it's gonna put your shoulder into a seriously unhealthy position. The shoulder blade is in place to essentially stop your elbow going back that far. So by lowering our elbows while they're flared, we're putting ourselves in a super dangerous position. So it's part of the reason I actually ended up injuring my shoulder all those years ago, because I did bench press in a bodybuilding manner, a bodybuilding manner, 
um, for such an extended period of time and put my shoulder into that position. So what we're gonna do today is look at turning that bench press into a full body movement and adopt more of a power lifting type setup. So we're not gonna go for that full on back arch, but again, what we are gonna look at doing is recruiting other muscles so that we can essentially push more weight and more volume over time and keep our shoulders in the healthiest position possible whilst performing the lift. When I first started trying to get my head around the whole concept of the bench press being a full body movement, it threw me. Wasn't really sure how you were supposed to get your entire body tight and filled with air and then be able to translate that force and that tension into the bench pressing movement. So what I, I guess what I figured out over time is essentially what we want to be doing as we lie back as we're under the bar, we want to think about actively pushing down through our heels and almost trying to hip thrust off the bench. Now at the same time, we don't actually need to elevate our hips off the bench, but so long as you're driving up with enough force to ensure your glutes are very seriously engaged throughout the movement, you're going to put yourself in a much better position than if you're just chilling out here with your legs out nice and relaxed. What that's gonna do is make sure that from your feet all the way up to your back where you're then locking in your lats and your shoulder blades, is it's gonna make sure that you're super, super tight and essentially provide you with a much more stable base from with which you can push. So same deal as if you're squatting or deadlifting, you wanna be as tight and as stable as possible. Get those feet into the ground, pushing down hard, locking the back in, and making sure you've got a stable position with which you can push from. Today's set and rep range, we're looking at five sets of five at 125 kilos. Now, I haven't benched in a while, as I said, so that is a slightly daunting number for me. We're gonna have to see how we go, but initially to get there, we're just gonna look at pyramiding up again, looking at reducing the reps as we add more weight to the bar. Again, it's all about preparing for the working set without making sure that when you do get there, you're knackered. So, Second warm up set here. Again, keep in mind too that every warm up set you do needs to mimic a working set so that when you do get to that working set, the only training variable that's changed is the amount of weight you're lifting. Okay, so this set, as Oscar's very rightly pointed out, my elbows are still flaring a little bit. So the best thing you can try and do is bend that bar or try and bend that bar as you're bringing it down towards your chest to help with that explosive power on the way back up. Okay, so I've got five sets of five at 125 kilos. What I didn't mention before is that the first rep of each set is gonna be a pause rep. Now, what a pause rep is gonna do is obviously eliminate momentum not going to be as much elasticity or as, as much bounce at the bottom of the rep which is going to be a great strength builder as well as mimicking obviously what I need to do in a powerlifting meet. The four reps after that are just regular reps getting through that volume. Okay, so with final set time, again, five reps, first set, that brutal pause, trying to maintain as much tension throughout the lift as possible. The breathing, haven't said anything about breathing just yet, but it's exactly the same as you would think after watching a squat or a deadlift video that I've put out last couple of weeks. We want to be making sure that while the bar is actively moving, we aren't actively breathing. So big breath in to prepare, getting through that rep, maintaining as much tension through our core and through our body as possible. And as soon as we complete that rep, then we can think about taking another one and preparing for the next rep. So I mentioned before, I'm still learning, right? I'm still trying to perfect my benching technique. So if there are any of you out there that think that you see a glaring error, please, <clears throat> please feel free to point it out in the comment section below. I'm open to advice. For me, I do tend to forget that when I get a little bit tired, really trying to tuck those elbows in. As I said before, really trying to bend that bar. You can probably see in the last few reps of that last set, 
my elbow started flaring a little bit as I started to get a little bit tired. Form breakdown is inevitable when you are trying to push the boundaries and you are tending to get a little bit tired. If that does happen, the best thing you can do is just slow it down. Don't do what I just did in that last set and, and tend to panic a little bit. Slow it down, focus on your breathing, think about what you've got to do and give it everything you've got. Give yourself every chance of getting through those reps. I'm gonna go with some sub-maximal work just to finish off. Two or three sets, see how we go. Three to five reps as technically perfect as I think I can do. So you guys might notice too that I'm benching with flat feet. I'm still trying to drive through my heels, but chances are the federation that I will ultimately compete in is going to have a, a rule that says you have to bench flat-footed. Typically what most powerlifters find is as you pull your feet back further, you can get more leg drive. But as I want to try and train a little bit more specifically for what it is that I want to do, I'm going to keep my feet flat throughout the duration while still driving through the heels to make sure I'm as tight as possible. So first accessory mover now, we're onto a high incline dumbbell chest press. We're going to go for four sets of 12. One of the things that we really want to focus on with all of the accessory work moving forward is keeping a nice, even, steady tempo. So nice and controlled movements. We really don't want to overshoot the mark as far as rate of perceived exertion is concerned. We want to keep it around an eight out of 10 as far as difficulty goes. Keep in mind, accessory work needs to be in line with that initial RPE. Sticking that eight out of 10, rather than taking it to failure. Ultimately, what we wanna be doing is making sure the volume is consistently increasing over time. Taking things to failure more often than not is going to ultimately mean at some stage, performance and volume is gonna start decreasing. So even if you're feeling like you could bust out a few more reps, Try and keep it in the tank because you want to make sure that you've always got room to keep going up. So even with the dumbbell bench, you can still incorporate the same principles from the flat bench press. Still driving through the heels, getting as tight as possible, focusing on maintaining as much tension as possible as the bar, you know, as the dumbbells are actively moving and only breathing at the top of the rep to set yourself up. So you can still do a set that is as strong as possible. Time for some uh, dumbbell Arnold presses. Three sets of 12. What we're gonna do is focus on really retracting the shoulder blades as hard as we possibly can before thinking about pressing. So moving on to our next accessory work, we've got a superset. We're gonna hit a seated dumbbell lateral raise. We're gonna superset that with a dumbbell skull crusher. We're gonna go for four sets of 15 reps each. So again, nice and controlled movements. Really making sure that we're controlling the down phase. Pushing up nice and silly through the up phase. And again, working to an RPE of around eight out of 10. Again, we want to try and avoid hitting failure. Okay, last super set for today. We're doing four sets of a plate front raise into an overhead tricep extension using a cable machine. We're gonna aim for 12 to 15 reps on each exercise.
team, that brings us to the end of session two on the road to becoming a strong motherfucker. Chest and shoulder and arm accessory work done and dusted. Next week, we are gonna go through my deadlift and lower body accessory workout. So guys, please make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of the upcoming workouts and trainer tips. And of course, if you do have any questions, please feel free to pop them in the comment section below. Of course, you can always learn more about strength training, DUP style programming via the description section underneath the video. Thanks so much for watching guys. I will see you next time.